All right, don't shoot the messenger. Mortgage rates have gone up a lot, more than 1% just this year. But is this the opportunity that buyers have been waiting for? Burns Fernandez here. What's going on, brother? Hi. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. All right, so Burns, um, if you were a buyer in this market, and we'll talk about what you're seeing. Yeah. I'll talk about, tell you what I'm seeing. We'll kind of wrap about all that, and everyone just gets to listen in on it here. Um, if you were a buyer, there's really this one thing you're hoping for, less competition, Correct. right? Which means that you either you need buyers to go away, Correct. other buyers to go away, or you need more houses to come online. Correct. Those are really the only two options, right? Correct. For things to get better for buyers. And so we got one of those two things. There's buyers going away. Now, caveat is higher interest rates. Yep. Makes the payment look higher. That's the reason that some of these buyers are going away because yep. I hate to break the news, but the inventory is not on its way. The cavalry is not coming. The builders aren't lining up thousands of homes to be built that will be delivered in 2025. or not. None of that's happening. Correct. So we don't have good news on the inventory front, but we do have some decent news on the buyer front for the buyers who can stick it out. There's less competition. Correct. Have you? You're noticing this as well, right? Oh yeah. Um, this week alone, like I said, I, I've I've had maybe eight to ten offers out. Um, a few of them actually, you know, the listing agents are calling me, asking me to tightening uh, um, contingencies and all that good stuff. Um, and what I'm seeing is instead of having twenty offers you're competing with, I'm seeing five to eight. Which you know that's significantly like less than how it was even like two or three months ago. Yeah. So there's a trend coming up. I don't know if it's specifically you know like correcting the market you know per se, but there's trends that's happening right now where a lot of the buyers are either waiting or um, they're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> they're either waiting or they're waiting. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean it's like. If you are, because everyone's a payment shopper, we all are. Yeah. There's no one's, you know, unique to that except for the cash buyers, I guess. Um, but you know, you're a payment shopper, so you're like, hey, I want my payment to be this much. Correct. And uh, but a lot of times, like, I can qualify you for more than that, you know. So I can qualify you for six thousand dollar a month payment, but you really only want it to be four. Correct. And that happens a lot, especially in the VA loan space that I'm in almost entirely. And so when that's the case, sometimes you have to look at these situations and go, okay, well, I may have to get in at this point. But I will tell you this, we have refinance booms, you know, every three or four years on average. When rates spike up like this, which is what's happening, rates are spiking, the Federal Reserve is going to raise rates six more times, um, you're going to see rates go up. When that happens, it's usually followed by, within two or three years, a refinance boom. Correct. Rates go down. All the people who got four and five percent refinanced to three something, and this has happened multiple times in my industry cycle of, let's say, the last 23 years. Okay, so um, now we don't know for sure that that will happen again, but most likely it will. It has in the past, and it also makes sense for debt service. This is something that I'm not going to go too too deep into, but rates need to be low so the government can make the payments on its debt. Correct. So they can't raise rates and keep rates high for very long. They need rates to go lower. So <clears throat> in short-term circumstances like this, when you go, well, gosh, I'm getting a 4% or a 4.75% on this home, just know that that isn't necessarily going to be your payment for forever. Correct. It won't necessarily be for forever. The amount of principal that you're going to pay every month is the same. So the amount of interest you're paying is going up. That's tax deductible. So I'm trying to put, just, you know, we're going to be optimistic at this situation that rates have gone up, but it's clearing the way for you to actually buy a house. Yep. Right? And if it's doing that, then that's something. And if you are capable of being able to purchase in that scenario and you can have decent confidence it's the opportunity to refinance within two or three years, and it may not even be that long, Correct. but I think it's safely two to three years, you know, it, we'll see opportunities, you know, to get lower rates. Yeah. Um, I I've, I've even have clients who uh, were able to refinance in a year. Yeah. You know, so again, you don't have to wait that long. I mean, you know, if you want, you can, but like, again, there, there are instances where even I actually have a couple of clients who did it in nine months, you yeah. know, if, 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 if the timing and the, the numbers are right, then you can refinance. Totally. And get your lower, uh, your, your rates lower. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't have to wait two or three years, but I'm just yeah. saying conservatively, I think we'll have a refi cycle in two to three years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the last refi cycle we just had it was, was just recently, actually. It wasn't that long ago, yeah. 2021. Yeah. So we, early 2021, um, late 2020, early 2021. 
we were refinancing a lot of people, Burns who had five something, four something, exactly what people are getting now. Yeah. So I would encourage buyers who, who want to own in San Diego, don't want to rent, to look at this as an opportunity. Correct. Say, so you know what? The competition is being thinned by short-term circumstances. So I'm going to take that opportunity. Here's an interesting thought. I had someone just tell me this today. It's a buyer's market when real estate values are going up because mm. the buyer is the one who's going to win. The seller is the one who's leaving money on the table. They're selling today instead of tomorrow where they could get more. The buyer's buying today where they're going to take that win. And I never thought about it that way. Yeah, me neither. Because I'm more of a long-term yeah. guy when it comes to real estate. And so when, you, when we try to set the, the, the right expectation for a buyer in this market, you, you got to tell them it's still a war zone out there, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, they, I'm not telling you you're just going to walk in and be able to like make offer below list and get it. You know, it, it's a bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I tell my clients that you got to be prepared to like put your best foot forward and then like chop some heads, you know, because if not, you're going to be left behind and yeah. then you're going to have like uh, your buyer's fatigue and then like what? You're just going to back out, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't do that. Like, I, I, I tell them right away, like, it's, it's a cutthroat market right now. You got to put your best foot forward. You got to have a lot of money saved up just in case. Because at the end of the day, you have to show the sellers that, like, you're, you're uh, financially able to purchase this house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're still selling the seller. Correct. Yeah. It hasn't gotten to a point where buyers are dictating terms. No. Let's be clear. What we're saying is that. Previously, yeah. to the rates going up, sellers were like a water trough in the desert. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, you know, everyone was trying to get to that glass of water. Yeah. And um, it's, been, it's been crazy. Well, it's still like that, yeah. but there's just less people vying for that trough of water. Yeah. So they still have something very unique. They, every home is basically a unicorn out there. Right. Um, but there's less people who are going after it full bore, so it creates an opportunity. That's what we're trying to say. Yeah. And so if you want a silver lining, here it is. And will rates continue to go up? Yeah, they yeah. will. That is going to happen. Yeah. So another reason why it makes sense to sort of take action sooner rather than later. Cool. Just got off the phone with the VA buyer, Burns, um, right before we start shooting today. And she said, what do I need to do to prepare for rates going higher? And the only thing I could tell her is that there's nothing you can do about it. There's exactly. nothing you can do to stop it. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to change it. The, and she said, so you're telling me I just need to act quickly. I said, actually, yeah, that's really the only thing you yeah. can do is move sooner rather than later. Listen, the Federal Reserve laid it out for us. Yeah. Six more rate hikes, rates going up. Um, they're, you know, they're unwinding their bond purchasing program. They're going to eventually start selling bonds. Listen, rates are going higher. Yeah. So it's true. Um, the way to get a lower rate is to move faster. Correct. And so if we kind of put all that together, what we're saying is right now there's an opportunity. You may not like the payment that you're getting on, on the house to start with. And I, and I understand that. And for people who don't want to make a 30-year commitment to that payment, here's the only thing I'll tell you. If, if I'm wrong, and I, I could be, maybe there is no refi cycle. Maybe 4.5% burns is the lowest we're going to see for the rest of our lives. <laughs> and if it is, if it is, and I'm wrong, won't you be glad you got it? Won't you be glad that you didn't wait and take a six or seven or an eight? Yep. That's, that's kind of the key, I think, yeah. is look at both sides of it. Yeah. What if I'm right? What if I'm wrong? Yeah. What's the right thing to do? Correct. I mean, a perfect example is like I have a few clients who e even like two weeks ago, rents were like around four and then it went down to 3.5 and they were like, oh, it's going to go down even more. Nope. This week, 4.25. Yeah. So you, there, you can't predict how the rates are going to go up or down or when it's going to go up or down. It's just, you know, you, you can't, there's really no way for you to time it. It's just, you have to just be quick and make a quick decision whether it's the right time to buy it for you. Yeah. Because, you know, just like what we, we said earlier, you, later down the road, you can refinance it anyways and, um, you know, make your payments lower. Yeah. Refi, you know, mortgage optimization happens to refinance almost all the time. Yeah. You can also recast your loan. So yeah. this is something that so. people, um, are mostly unaware of, but essentially if you come into some cash, maybe you sell another property, inheritance, whatever, yeah. you can call your servicer and say, I want to recast my loan, which is where you take that money, you send it to them as a principal pay down, but then they re-amortize your loan for the remaining months you have left yeah. so that your payment drops. 
yeah. without refinancing. It's right. basically the, the simple refinance for people who have cash they want to put down. You yeah. don't get to change the rate or anything, but you, 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 know, you just get to re-amortize with yeah. a lower balance. So there's different ways to optimize your mortgage, and it's very unlikely that you would get a loan right now here today and then have no opportunity to optimize your mortgage down yeah. the road. That would be very, very unlikely. Yeah. I got lottery tickets to sell you. And I think that's a misconception, you know, that a lot of the buyers don't know. They, they think, you know, oh, we're going to be tied up in, in, on, on this, you know, high rate for like 30 years. No. You know, you have options to lower, lower your payments. Yeah. And if rates did continue to go up for, and you it, were in this 4.5%, yeah. the rates are all of a sudden 6, 7, 8, 9. Not only will you be stoked about the 4.5% that you have, but that means if rates are 6, 7, 8, 9, you're also getting uh, four or five percent in your savings account. Correct. Yeah. Like you have other things that are happening for you that are positive Correct. for you money wise that you didn't have yeah. otherwise. Sure. So that can help offset your four and a half versus the three and a half you thought you should have had a year ago or whatever. Yeah. So there's there's multiple ways to look at it, but it's at face value, most people will make the wrong decision. Yeah. And it's the same thing in the stock market burns. People will tend to buy high and sell low. They do it exactly the wrong way. Because if you insert emotion, which is always present in our business, as you know, yeah. you insert that into an equation, it is a, it's a recipe for bad decisions Correct. to happen. <laughs> it just is. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Emotional decisions are usually not very well calculated. Yeah. So I'm hoping we can bring some light today with some of these items that we're, we're talking about. Not just putting a positive spin on like what everyone considers to be bad news, like rates going up is bad news. Yeah. Um, it's a part of market cycles. It's a part of how this all works. And it is actually truly providing an opportunity for some buyers right now. Yeah. I mean, also, people need to realize this has been going on for years. It's not like, oh, it's just happening just now. You know, the rates are going up so high. Oh my God, like we can't buy, we can't afford anything. I'm like, no, it's been, it's a cycle. You know, this has been going on for years and years and years. And people are still purchasing. Yeah. And people are building equity and building wealth, like, you know, by, by, by buying uh, real estate. Yeah. And so. they've been doing extremely well for themselves with right. that over the qu course of humanity. Yeah. Even <laughs> if you bought, <laughs> and that they just got, the, there's a, a guy who updates this number every once in a while. He just updated it on Twitter. But if you bought at the absolute peak, which was in 2009, yeah. the absolute peak, um, now on average, nationwide, on average, up 35%. Yeah. If they kept that property. If you kept the property, <laughs> right? If you yeah. just kept the property, yeah. you're up a nice chunk. chunk and that's if yeah. you bought at the absolute worst time in history. Yeah. So it's more about time in the game Correct. than anything else. Burns, thank you so much for your time today, course, man. Yeah. I really appreciate you, brother. Good yeah. luck on your offers today. Thanks for having you. Yeah. Hey, share this with your friends. Let's help make them smarter than everyone else.